To say you gotta know somebody Or know somebody To get somewhere these days To say you know that's alright Yeah, that's alright Cause you know that's alright with me Yeah, you know that's alright Yeah, that's alright Cause you know that's alright 26 years my business partner is one of the most, Jeremy Ricci one of the most brilliant real estate investors I've ever met. So between the two of us, uh, you know, you've got some great people to help you. That's fantastic. Wow. Investors need help. Yeah. Especially yeah. when they first yeah. get into and, this business. Yeah, when they first get into the business. Yeah. Let me ask you this, because I always tell people this business is simple. It really is an easy business. Would you agree with that statement? I really do. Uh, now, there are some sophistications to it of which you've alluded to. But for me, you've got a tenant and you've got a house. And I try to get the house in a good area and my house is a beautiful when, when we finish the rehab. And I try to get a good tenant and I you know, really get into the tenant before I let him in. And I try to get him in the house and then I have a 26 page lease. <laughs> I love to see that, that. That covers everything under the sun and the initial most probably 40 times in here. And it's, it's a learning process. So once I get the tenant into the house, then how do I manage 75 houses, 27 garages, to my cell phone. I have no office phone. It is my cell phone. How can a 71-year-old guy manage 100 units to his cell phone? It's impossible, right? I don't think so. No, it's not because this is the lease. And the lease tells them they have to communicate with us in writing. All maintenance items in writing. Checks are to be mailed. The, post or, the, the postmark date is the date of payment. They have to the third. If it's the fourth, they get a $100 late fee. If, it's the, if they haven't paid the eighth, they get a pay or move. If they haven't pay, paid by the 12th, we file in district court. We go by the lease. So how many people, how many people have you met who have been in real estate and then gotten out of it and still doing flips or something like that, but they say they couldn't handle being a landlord. I hear that all the time. You hear it all the time. And yet, here's this old man who has set 100, 100 units coming to his cell phone and he spends 12 hours a week doing it. <laughs> How is that possible? Uh, it must be easier than uh, people It must be it. easier because I have the darn lease right. and I go by the lease it's like you know I figure if you're if you're interested in business and you're an organized person okay the first thing I always tell people is just learn that's all you got to do right now just learn find a guru that you appreciate maybe it's me maybe it's Joe maybe it's somebody else maybe it's all of us maybe it's both of us it doesn't matter Find somebody who's doing what you want to do and emulate it. Learn everything you can about it. That's right. And before you know it, you'll be rocking and rolling. You know, you might make a few mistakes, but that's why you, you hang your license where you have some experienced investors hanging out in the office that can help you with things like that. Right. You know, talk about easy. Let me tell you a little bit about the vacation rental stuff I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. Right? I have these all these properties in, uh, in Florida, about 23... Uh, properties down in Florida that I ran out as vacation rentals and I went in and what, what area? Sarasota. They're all in Sarasota. Beautiful right. place. Siesta Key, Florida is the key in Sarasota. A lot of people don't know this. It's the number one rated beach in the United States. Better than Hawaii. Better than California. Wow. You heard me accurately. Number one rated beach in the United States. A lot of people don't know about it from this area because the bulk of the people who go to the west coast of Florida are people from the Midwest. Ohio, Illinois, Michigan, Wisconsin, that area, they don't go anywhere else. That's where they go. And people from the East Coast typically go down 95 and they go to the East Coast of Florida, but the West Coast kicks the East Coast butt. You just have to go there at least once to see it. And uh, 
what happens with these rentals is everything is done online, okay? So I wake up in the morning and there's an email. VRBO? Right, right, VRBO. Somebody just rented one of my houses and $1,800 is being wired into my bank account, you know? Talk about easy. It's just the money just comes rolling in. And, um, you know, I absolutely love it down there. Uh, whenever, whenever a tenant of mine moves out of a row home in Philadelphia, I don't call up the wife and kids and say, hey, there's a vacancy in Philadelphia. Let's go down for the weekend and hang out, right? We don't do that. <laughs> but in Florida, I could go down there anytime I want. Because when you have all these vacation rental houses, nothing's rented 100%. People are coming and going. It's kind of like a hotel business. So, you want to go down to Florida next week? Yeah, yeah, let's go. Hey, what the heck? Let's go. And uh, you just go down there and you get to enjoy it. And while I'm down there, I'm conducting business. I'm looking for more places to buy. I'm making a list of things that need to be repaired. I'm meeting with my maintenance guy, my cleaner, and, and private lenders down there, various things like that. And I would never be happy being on vacation if I wasn't working anyway. So, put me on a cruise ship, I'm ready to throw myself over the railing. You know, I need to be, be doing business. I'm addicted to real estate, I don't have a choice. So, uh, when did you buy those properties? Uh, I started buying in 2012 down there. I kind of identified that. Uh, it was time to get to Florida. I ha had my eye on Florida for years, but I uh, had my, uh, my hands in too many things up here. But 2012 has been a great time. We've already seen a lot of appreciation. Actually, Wonderful. actually too much, in my opinion, because um, I wasn't ready for it to pop quite yet. Um, I wanted it to, to, to be slow for another couple of years so I could buy you right, know, four right, or five million right, more right. worth of property. It, it's popped a little sooner than I'd hoped and, uh, and I'm up a ton and I'm thrilled about that, but I'm really not. I wish, I wouldn't mind seeing it, you know, back, right, right, back right, right, a little bit. Right, right. Um, but, but it is what it is. You, you can't control those kind of things. And, and even though it's popped a little bit, I still think there's tremendous room for growth in Florida. Tremendous room. Now, let me tell you another thing about Florida a lot of people don't know. It's a heck of a lot easier than doing business in a place like Philadelphia. Philadelphia, you got to have your business privilege license. you got to have your landlord license. you got to have your rental suitability license. That's three licenses. I know a brain surgeon in Philadelphia. He's only got one license. You know, I need three. But down there, it's a little easier. Mm -hmm. It's a little easier to be a landlord, not to do construction. If you're going to mess around with new construction, that eh, gets a little hairy now because you're dealing with hurricane zones and things like that. That right. gets tricky. Right. But if you're just buying existing properties and fixing them up and rocking and rolling with them, well, um, boy, you got nobody bothering you. Much, much easier. And uh, how, how did you do the financing down there? Uh, well, all different kinds of ways. Uh, <clears throat> um, my first book is called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And my second book is finished. It's in... It's in uh, uh, publishing right now. It'll be ready in about eight weeks. And it's called How to Buy Houses with None of Your Own Money. Right. And that's really what I specialize in these days is uh, I teach people how to buy houses with none of their own money. So I basically do it three different ways. I use uh, private money. I raise private money and I buy houses with private lenders money. And I give those lenders, uh, you know, the necessary security of notes and mortgages secured against the properties that I manage. And I have a long track record of owning hundreds of properties, all different kinds of things. So the private lenders who, uh, who get to know me, they feel very comfortable uh, lending me money because they know, uh, you know, this, is, this guy's Phil Falcone, he doesn't do anything else, this is all he does. Right? He's addicted to real estate. So, uh, <clears throat> so I, I, I manage the properties to perfection, which means that they're gonna make the most money possible that they can, and my private lenders are very comfortable with that. Another way that I buy houses is I use Subject 2, where I take over existing mortgages. It's a mortgage takeover program. If you want to learn how to do that, go to my website, addictedtorealestate.com, and check out the buyer's briefcase. I developed a product to teach people how to do Subject 2 mortgages. If you don't know how to do this technique, I'm telling you, it is not that complicated. And when you learn how to do it, it it's just a beautiful thing. You just walk in. And, and somebody has a house and it's essentially a free house, you take over the financing, you sign some paperwork and next thing you know you're the owner and you're paying their mortgage. It's beautiful. And the third way that I do it is I do seller financing where I'll get the seller to, you know, carry paper for me. So the truth is that the way that I buy houses, it typically isn't just private money or just subject to or just seller financing. It's typically a combination of those things. I see. You know? 
So uh, you learn these three techniques and almost every real estate deal is either one of those three techniques or a combination of those three techniques. And you can pretty much buy houses with none of your money. And, and that's what I love to do. Heck, Excellent. Wonderful. The return on the, your investment when your investment is zero is pretty good. Oh, it's infinite. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it, it is. It's infinite. Hmm? That's another thing that I follow with mine on, on my spreadsheet is the cash on cash return. That is, after the deal is done, how much cash did I leave in the property? And what's my annualized return? And you can be over 50%. And if you're over 50%, uh, with all the other uh, aspects of real estate, ap appreciation, paying down the mortgage, tax write-offs, you're going to be in the uh, Warren Buffett area after a period of time. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Um, hey, we're sitting in an office building right now. I, was, I gave Joe a tour of it. It's the first time he's been here. Beautiful oh, place. Yeah. Here's Cash uh, flow, baby. Here you go, Executech Suites. And um, I was telling Joe the story. This place has 47 offices in it. And uh, I bought it for, uh, the sale price was $2,150,000. Uh, and I bought it with $10,000 in the bank. And if you want to read about that story, it's, it's a huge, amazing chapter, a story you will never forget if you read it. And it's in my book, AddictedToRealEstate.com. You can get it on Amazon or on my website. Check it out. Read a story about how a guy buys a building. At the time I bought it, it had a rent roll of $42,000 a month. I put 15000 bucks of my own money into the building. My return on my investment was three weeks. <laughs> wow. Well, because the day I bought it, the, the, with, with a $42,000 a month rent roll, the, the profit per month was, was more than 15000 right. So the fifteen grand I put up, I got back in about three weeks. And I said, this, this is just beautiful. I used to walk around this building when I first bought it and said, why would anybody sell me this building? But the, the people who uh, owned it, they had uh, bigger dreams and they were using it as a step to bigger things. So, mm -hmm. you know. There's amazing opportunities, things, wonderful, amazing things that can happen to you in your life in this business. And to, me, to me, this property isn't just a property. It's not a building. It's, it represents 16 years of me busting my butt. And, and even today, now that I've owned it over you know, a decade, I still, when I walk up and down these hallways, I mean, I feel so proud of... Oh, wow. What I did wow. and how I wow. did it, you know? Wow. Give me five bits. Oh, thank you, yeah. thank you. Being determined to make it happen and just wanting it. If you, if you have those desires in your doing, heart. Doing the deal. It's making it happen. And it becomes a monument to your success that you can be proud of forever. Right. You know? And uh, my, my daughter works here. My wife works here. My son comes here and paints the hallways. You know how great that makes me feel that when mm -hmm. someone in my family needs money and I go, hey man, you know, I'll look you up. Uh, right. You know, you know how to run a carpet cleaning machine, go down there and clean the hallways. It's so many great ways you can help people if, if you have success and then you can share it with people. It's a wonderful thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, let's talk about October 7th. You know, you're, you're coming to Warminster. We're going to be at the... Uh, Mike's York Street Pub, it's at the corner of York Road and Street Road, the two biggest roads in Warminster. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping a lot of people come out because Joe has, you know, a wonderful amount of, of, of information to share with you. And, and I want you to come and hear it. I don't just ask anybody to be a guest at my meeting. I ask people that I respect, people that I look at and go, this guy's really got it going on. And that's why I ask them to come, because I respect them, and because I like them, and I want you to learn what it is that he's doing so that you'll have success. You want to you wanna tell people a little bit about, you know, what, what you think you can help them with at the meeting? Well, I, I'd like to cover uh, two topics. One is how I went from zero to four million dollars in equity in ten years. And the way I did that is much the same way that you did. That is, I bought properties, and I could tell you a few stories as well. Bought properties with little or no money down, or I borrowed the down. I renovated it, scratching and clawing for the money. Then I went to the local, I rented it during that time. 
and I went to the local bank and said, I have a property and a lease, and I'd like you to finance it. And because of my past, or with it, when I first got started, I just had to sell them on the fact that I knew what I was doing. And then they go out and they appraise it, and they give me 70% of the appraised value, which hopefully will take me out of the property as far as the money I have in it, or as close as I can. When I first started out, I, I didn't have these concepts down, and I didn't have the execution down. So I left too much money in, in the property. But now I'm able to get out the money, have, have it rented in a niche where my average uh, occupancy rate is 96.2. Average tenant stay is 6.2 years. So my turnover is low and as you know with rental real estate the, the lower you can get the turnover the more money you make. So I'd like to go over those things and subject to and owner financing. <laughs> here, 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 here's one for you. I came across this property, it was a triplex, and it was in a good area, but it was kind of run down, and et cetera. And it happened to be uh, a principal of a school. So I was a teacher, and I happened to meet him, and I told him that I'd like to buy his property. And he said, well, I'm asking this amount. I said, well, you know, I might give you that price but I'd like you to take back the second. And he said, he understood about taking back the second mortgage. And he said, and he said how much? I said, well, uh, it's, you know, the whole thing. And he said, how much do you want to put down? I said, I'll put, I'll put down $1,000. He thought about it. He accepted it. But at settlement, I then got the rent roll and I got the security deposits. So I walked out of real estate, uh, out of the settlement, not with minus $1,000, but with $5,000 in my pocket. They got paid to buy it. I got paid to buy it. Yeah. Well, that's a beautiful thing when you learn how to do that. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. You can get paid to buy real estate. A lot of people, a lot of people don't believe you when you tell them, you know, hey, I'm going to teach you how to buy houses with none of your own money. A lot of people, their first reaction is, I don't know about that. And I said, I said, let me, let me just say one statement to you, okay? I buy houses with none of my own money so often, okay? And most of the time, I get paid to buy them. That whenever I buy one where I don't get paid to buy it, I'm actually disappointed. <laughs> a little bit disappointed. I mean, I'll, I'll take a free building, okay? But... When you get paid to buy something, it, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful right. thing. Right. So, um, all right. Well, I mean, I'm really looking forward to having you come out to my meeting. It's October 7th at 7 p.m. We're going to be at Mike's York Street Pub. For those of you who have been to my meeting before, you know where we're at. We're in downtown, right in the center of Warminster. Make sure you go to my meetup page. Okay, meetup.com. Look for Addicted to Real Estate. Just type Addicted to Real Estate in the search and sign up for Joe's meeting because we're going to have a limit of about a hundred people and you don't want to miss Joe here because you're going to learn something okay meeting costs 20 bucks come out for 20 bucks and learn you know a couple of things that'll probably be with you for the rest of your life right and uh, I think that concludes our interview for today I want to thank you Joe for coming out and I, I really enjoyed having you on my show and um, guys don't miss Joe speaking on October 7th, all right? I'm going to be there as well. And then after the meeting, we're going to do something that a lot of other meetings don't do. We call it the meeting after the meeting. We're going to go downstairs to the bar, and, and we're going to still be hanging around to share our brilliance with you. So if you got some issues and you want some personal time with me, sure. come to the meeting. Good idea. Come, come hang out with Joe, have a beer with him, and learn, you know, Maybe we can help you with a personal issue that you're dealing with right now. You never know. Who knows? Maybe we become partners on real estate deals. All real estate investors, we're a small world and we have to help each other. Right? And, and, and even for guys like Joe and I, we, we love it when we meet new people and things can come from it. 
right? I'm Phil Falcone. Thanks a lot for watching this video, and I'll see you October 7th.